Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Welcome to my videos where we talk about some of the work that I've managed to get up to this week on the Inkscape project and talk about some of the other things that are going on. So first of all I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my Patreons. Um, this week is special because there was a big uh, response to my request last week f to get new patrons um, to be able to do the CMYK work. Uh, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to everybody who signed up, everybody who uh, shared the post and the buzz that it created to sort of be able to spend more time on this project. And I can guarantee you there is more hours now thanks to all of our efforts. Okay, so let's get into what those efforts look like. Um, to start off with, let's talk about some of the fixes that I have been doing as a part of the Bug Accelerator pro program. Um, this is the Inkscape project is actually paying me to fix bugs for the 1.3.1 release. Um, first of all, I fixed a bleed and margins problem. Um, this was... It, it's a problem of my own doing. When I did the bleed and margins work for 1.3, 1 I was not handling the units correctly when it was saving them to the file. So for instance, if you put in three millimeters, I was saving three millimeters into the file. Um, this sounds like the correct thing to do, um, but the way SVG works is that you don't really want to be doing that because you can't guarantee what the actual physical size of that of what a millimeter means uh, unless you have a document scale. Um, so I had to, to basically back out a lot of the uh, problematic conversions and make sure that the ordering of conversions was happening correctly and then uh, make sure that there was data security, i.e. for all of the pe people that are making documents today with 1.3.0, that their documents wouldn't lose data uh, when we come to saving it in the, in the correct units. Uh, that all works. I made sure to write tests so that uh, it doesn't break break anything. It was actually a much bigger piece of work than I expected to work to work on. So, uh, but I, th I thought it was important because da data safety is pretty you know high priority. I think um, there's a small fix to macOS with uh, fonts. Really, on some macOS machines, Inkscape would open and it would be ba basically be an entire block of to tofu. Had an exchange with. Uh, some of the, the users and a fellow developer about some of the ways in which we could fix that and we did some testing to see if it could work. I actually borrowed a machine in, or in order to test a few things. I also fixed a crash in the PDF and S SVG exporter if you had clones and the clones weren't included in the pages that, that, that you, want, you wanted to export. That's been fixed. Okay, so let's talk about the CMYK work. Um, so the good the good news is that I have uh, got some code that uses the Python extension method that, that I mentioned but before that produces CMYK PDFs. Um, okay, so they're upside down. There's no text. Uh, the stroke widths are wrong. They might be the wrong size. Uh, there's definitely no patterns or gradients. There's no transparencies. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of work yet to do, but I'm very happy with the sort of like first steps into producing multiple pages, uh, setting all of the, uh, transformations that you have to do and then, uh, drawing things into the can canvas. And I'm also happy with the way that I've managed to handle the color space ICC pro profiles and with the uh, ability to actually set the device CMYK profile correctly. Uh, this is is a basically a big proof of con concept that producing uh, CMYK PDFs is possible, and now we just have to um, develop the Capy PDF li library further to enable some of the functionality, or to better document some of the fun functionality it does have because it's a pretty raw uh, interpretation of the P PDF write writing spec. Um, that actually brings me to one of the more sort of philosophical. Uh, things I, I wanted to talk about this week, which is about um, when you're interacting as a paid open source developer with other programmers, you do have to be careful to um, understand the 
relationship that you're going to have with an, an unpaid open source developer. And uh, if I just pull out my sheet for understanding where people stand, uh, Cappy PDF is developed by a single developer who is essentially operating it as a hobby. Um, they don't appear to be targeting any particular users. They are entirely in control about what they develop and how they develop it. And they are definitely unpaid. Um, I, I checked. They're also not interested in being paid too. So I have to consider this the, the, the library to be a hobby. Now, this is not necessarily a problem. There's lots of code in the world that is uh, developed in this way. But it means as a paid developer, I have to I have two possible problems. Either I ask the developer to do work uh, and I'm not paying them, which is a labor rights problem because you can't really ask people to work for you for free. It's not a thing that you should be doing. Um, or I can do the work myself, which sounds correct. But then what ends up happening is, is that you end up taking over the project because a paid developer can usually work on stuff a, a lot more aggressively. So what I want to do is I don't want to do either of those things. I want to be very careful, very consensual, and basically develop the things that are necessary for the CMYK extensions in uh, Inkscape and only fork or soft fork if I absolutely have to. Um, so far, the developer Juicy has been very receptive to talking with me, and I want to make sure that I don't um, step over any boundaries when it comes to operating his li library. Um, you know, being respectful in, in in the open source world is, I think, the bare minimum of how we should co cooperate as hu human beings. Uh, and I understand that that sounds like th it may slow progress, but I. Hopefully, I don't think it will. Hopefully, I think a good culture of um, cooperation actually improves productivity in, in, in the long run. Um, okay, so that's the philosophical side out, out of the way. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that have been going on in Inkscape, um, stuff that I haven't really been involved with. Uh, there's not a lot going on. A lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes. Uh, Raphael has been working on some uh, improvements to lib2gm where he, he wants to be able to take two arcs, say for instance a segment of a circle that cross each other and finding the place where they cross uh, and being able to dissect the arc is uh, is a piece of mathematics that we were missing. So that affected the shape builder because you had to convert all of the arcs to Bezier curves, which is an approximation, which um, you know hurts the ability to actually do things. Same thing for bisecting, bisecting arcs with Bezier's or base bisecting arcs with just straight lines even. All of those bits of mathematics are being slowly developed and further improved. Uh, and I think the shape builder will benefit from that in 1.4. Um, uh, Jonathan has been continuing his work on the extensions, trying to just do refactoring work and just trying to make sure that um, the 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 Inkex code base improves. And I've been trying to keep him to, to a stable API so that we can ship the improvements in 1.3.1 because the extensions are much more stable than the Inkscape code base when it comes to testing. So I think we can ship it more aggressively. Um, the... Uh, Adobe Illustrator project, the, the importer, is currently transitioning. Uh, the Inkscape pro project decided not to continue the contract with the uh, developer that we hired. And instead, uh, Jonathan has said that he wanted to continue the work. Um, the original developer actually said that they'd also like to continue doing some of the work. So we'll see how that shakes out. Um, contracting is, is always hard. And I believe the um, hiring team had to make a tough call on whether to continue the contract or not. Um, there is a lot of work PBS is continuing to do, uh, a lot of work that our GTK4 developers are doing. Um, a lot of that work is not really describable. It's all sort of like events and widgets and all sorts of stuff. Uh, one of the GNOME slash GTK guys has been hanging out in our rocket chat and talking to us about some of the GDK4 stuff. That's great to see. We love to have that communication. It really improves our ability to understand where the GNOME project is coming from when it develops some of the, li the libraries that we use. Um, and yes, that's probably about it for this week. Um, 
once again, thank you so much for watching this this update. Thank you if you support me on Patreon. Uh, please consider jo joining if you don't. And I will see you all next week.